I'm going to tell you the story of two schools. Both of them are in the state of Tennessee, but they have drastically different budgets. One is the University of Tennessee. The other is Tennessee State University. Both of these schools got their start as what we call land-grant institutions. Back in the late 1800s, then-President Abraham Lincoln signed a law that gave states federal land or cash to start land-grant colleges. A lot of big universities got their, their start that way. My alma mater, Rutgers, is a land-grant university. University of Missouri, land-grant university. University of Georgia, same thing. The University of Tennessee was all white until 1961. Tennessee State University, though, is an HBCU, a historically black college or university. And it turns out that for decades, one of these schools wasn't getting its fair share. And you can probably guess which one of these schools it is. Records show TSU may be owed up to, wait for it, $544 million in land-grant funding. The federal land-grant program provides funding for certain research and teaching programs at land-grant institutions. It typically relies on states to match however much money is granted. But a new report found that from 1957 to 2007, Tennessee didn't match funds for TSU, leaving its only public HBCU without hundreds of millions of dollars in funding. And here's the real kicker. During the same period, Records show that the University of Tennessee not only received its full state match, but in some years received more than required. Our next guest says that funding disparity stings even more when you remember the historic connection between the two schools. TSU was founded because black students weren't allowed to enroll at the University of Tennessee. And he wonders why nearly a century later, when they get more, we can't even get our minimum. Joining me now is Tennessee State Representative Harold Love Jr. TSU is in part of his district. Representative Love, how the heck does this happen? That is a very long time for it to be just an oversight. Uh, you're exactly right, and thank you for covering this, this important subject. Uh, when we began to talk about land-grant funding and we began to look at the disparity in the funding, uh, one thing our committee uh, wanted to do was find out exactly how much was owed Tennessee State University, and then talk about a plan to cure that. And I think it goes a much, much deeper uh, than some people think because many of, of those years when Tennessee State did not get its full match from the state, they also had to find other sources of income to make that match up so they could then qualify to keep their federal fund. So we're talking about a situation where the university uh, did not be, you know, have the chance to maintain their buildings, didn't have the chance to give salary increases uh, to professors and didn't have a chance to buy scholarships for students. I mean, it's, it's just an insane amount of money um, and, and certainly would have gone to those things you're, you're, you're listing off in terms of, you know, maintaining the school, offering, I mean, there's lots you can do with this money. And I want to ask sure. about the allotment of land grant funds. A three to one ratio was set in which the University of Tennessee was supposed to receive 75% and TSU was supposed to receive 25%. But apparently that doesn't happen. Why is that? Right. Uh, in, in 1913, the legislature in Tennessee set that particular ratio and they were supposed to, again, allot those funds to UT and, of course, 25 from Tennessee State. So we found oftentimes was literally in the budget books from 1956 to 2007, there were no entries in the category for Tennessee State. And, and, and there were still entries in there for University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And, and so what they said to us was uh, Tennessee State was not getting its state match. And uh, yet the state of Tennessee had the wherewithal to provide the other land grant their match. And the more difficult part for many of us to understand is, you know, why would you not want our school to succeed? Why would you not want this, this college to succeed? And so going forward, we're trying to, you know, say, let's look at ways to, again, cure this, this arrearage. And, and how wonderful will it be for both of our land grants to move forward with all their full funding and make sure that all of our counties in Tennessee have these uh, agriculture extension centers uh, fully funded and financed? and that the students at Tennessee State would have 
all the access they need also. Yeah, and TSU apparently isn't the only HBCU dealing with this type of issue. Back in 2016, all states met their, met their requirements for predominantly white land-grant universities, but roughly half of the HBCUs received a full state match that year, um, and that was five years ago. Why isn't this a bigger deal? This seems like egregious, particularly because, you know, budgets are annual. So every year this comes up, you know, to your point, that column yeah. is just left blank and nobody says anything? Uh, so let me give credit where a lot of credit is due. Uh, in 1970, my father was a legislator, and he and Representative Alvin King uh, also began to study this issue of TSU's inadequate funding. And they compiled a report and produced a report in 1970. And so that became the basis upon which I really began to build my argument that that report was produced in 1970. So here we are 50 years later, and we have not fixed this issue. Now, of course, going forward, uh, TSU does get its full match, but we're talking about the arrearage. And to your point also, there are other black land-grant universities, HBCU land-grants, who are facing a similar problem. And, and they have lower endowments. They have, uh, of course, lower amounts coming in because they've had to make this match. They've had to dig into other revenues. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating, really, because when you go to uh, the legislature and, and you right. talk about the budget uh, and, and no one is, is putting it in. Tennessee State Representative Harold Love, I appreciate you being here um, for what is a very frustrating story. Uh, as soon as I heard it, I was very upset. I'm like, how, did, how does it happen for since the 1800s? This is not normal. Normally, somebody would notice that on the budget line item. Uh, thank you for being here. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.